I'm going to work out a couple reaction types. I'm not going to work them all out. I'm going to try to at least demonstrate one of each of the five different types of reactions. And again, one of the best ways to remember the five different types of reactions is to know what each reaction does. So again, when we look at a combustion reaction, a synthesis reaction, a decomposition, a single replacement, and a double replacement reaction, it's nice to know what the generic equation is for each. So, looking at a combustion reaction, okay, combustion reaction, you can abbreviate it, you don't have to write the whole thing out. Remember that we have some carbon, hydrogen, and look. We have some carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes an oxygen compound there, or element. Take that again. We have carbon, hydrogen, and sometimes oxygen is included in the hydrocarbon or the compound that contains the carbon. Carbon and hydrogen. It is always reacting with oxygen. That's what makes it a combustion reaction. And the products for this type of reaction will always be the same stuff that you're breathing out. Carbon dioxide and water. So you're always going to have carbon dioxide and water as your products. All right. You're always going to have carbon dioxide and water as your products. And the best way to balance these things out after you do your inventory, and, it's, and I strongly advise doing an inventory when working and balancing these out. Balance your hydrogens first, then balance your carbons. And again, when you balance your hydrogen, it's probably a very good idea to make sure that you have an even number. Okay? So do this first, but make sure it's an even number. And then balance your carbons and then balance your oxygen. So hydrogen first, carbon second, and save the oxygen for dead last. But also with your hydrogen, try to make it an even value, an even coefficient, all right? And don't use decimals or fractions. We'll talk about that later, okay? So use whole numbers when balancing these out. So Water first, or I'm sorry, hydrogen first. Bounce your hydrogens out first. So if you've got a, a, a situation, which I'll do on the examples, um, but make, try to make that an even coefficient and then save the oxygen for last. Okay. Um, also, you have your synthesis reaction. So synthesis is where you have a plus B, and these are generally elements, okay? So it's one type of element reacting with another type of element, and it forms AB, okay? And for what I'm going to give you on the test, I'm going to make sure these are always ionic compounds, so you'll have a metal with a non-metal. Always write the metal first. So your metal will always be first, okay? Some of you are still writing your non-metal first because of maybe from the other reactions, but always write the metal first. Always remember that a metal has a positive charge. Non-metals are negatively charged. Okay. Then the next type of reaction is a decomposition. Okay. And the generic equation for that is you have whoops, AB, and it breaks down into A plus B. Okay. And don't forget that the, again, this will be an ionic compound. You'll break it down into its elements. But if it ends, say your non-metal here ends in I-N-E or gen, you need to make sure that that is diatomic. All right? If you have a non-metal that ends in I-N-E or gen, like, again, looking at the periodic table. So what's not shown there is hydrogen, Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So if you have any of those elements standing all by itself, you have to represent that as a diatomic, which means that it will be like this, like B2, okay? Which is like chlorine, bromine, oxygen, hydrogen, all of those, when they're by themselves, in other words, not with a metal, then they need to be the next one is a single replacement reaction and the generic component of that is where we have A reacting with BC 
And if A is a metal, what's going to happen is the metal is going to try to replace the metal in our compound and kick that out. So if that does take place, then we will have AC plus B all by itself. Now again, you have a table to tell you if that's going to happen or not. So I'll let you go back and look at the table. If A is a non-metal, if A is a non-metal, then what that's going to happen is if A is a non-metal, then what that means is A is going to try to kick out the other non-metal in the compound. And so we will form BA plus C. Okay? And again, if C is a non-metal and it's standing all by itself and it ends in INE or GIN, you've got to represent that as a diatomic. And then the last example here is a double replacement reaction. Okay? And the generic equation for that is where we have two compounds, just like that, and what's going to happen here is the metals are going to switch places, or if you don't like that, you say, well, I want the non-metals to switch places. I don't care. They're switching partners, okay? So they're switching who, they're, who they started with, so that on the product side, we would have AY plus XB. And then from this, we have to determine if one of these forms a PPT or not, okay, or is not soluble. Okay. So again, the way this looks, there's our whole scenario there, combustion, synthesis, uh, decomposition, single replacement with the metal, with the non-metal is our standalone, and our double replacement. Now a couple things are to realize, to recognize, with a combustion reaction, you have carbon hydrogen. Sometimes oxygen's in that compound, but it's always reacting with oxygen. There's no other scenario like that here. With synthesis, you have two elements, or two types of elements, standing all by themselves. They will combine to form one compound. Decomposition, you only have one thing, and it's going to break apart into its elements. Very different from the others. Single replacement, you have one kind of element with a compound. One kind of element with a compound. Okay, so it's a single replacement. And then the double replacement is you have two compounds. So there are no other reactions that have two compounds within it. Some of you might look at single replacement and think that's a single replacement, but it's not. Because again, I'm forming carbon dioxide and water, which is not one of these things here. Okay. All right, so let's look at some examples here. Let's see here. So again, go to the schedule, uh, honors, second. January. Let's go to, I think it was even more practice. And this again, and the answers are right there. Okay, so here we have our thing. Now let me try to blur that up a little bit. Okay. So on this, I also want you to try to tell me what type of reaction it is, because that's what I'll ask on the test. I'm going to scoot that over. Okay. So let's look at the first example here, which is clearly what type of reaction. Is it a combustion, synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, or double replacement? Well, we have carbon and hydrogen and sometimes oxygen. So we know that our products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Now to speed things up, I'm going to balance this a lot quicker. Okay. So let's look at the hydrogen. We have 24 over here. We need 24 on the right side. Okay, so we have 24. If I put a 12 here, okay, that's kind of nice because I have an even number of oxygens, except here's the problem. Since I have an even number of oxygens on this side, if I leave this as a coefficient of 1, I'm going to have an odd number. So what I need to do, and this is kind of weird, I actually need to put a 2 here to balance my hydrogens first. This is a weird scenario. Trust me, it's a weird scenario. So what I need to do is make sure that I have even numbers on both sides of the equation. So recognizing that early, that I have an even plus an odd makes an odd number, unless I put a 2 there. 
So by doing that, now I, that means that I need to have even on both sides. So really, when I look, look at this, I have 24 times 2, which is 48. So that means I need to put a 24 here for my water. Okay? So my hydrogens are good, and I didn't have to erase anything, as long as I caught it early. Okay, so now looking at my carbon, I have 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, so I have 10 carbon there. And then, so, and again, notice I'm not doing an inventory, but you're very welcome to do an inventory. So now I've got my carbons and my hydrogens balanced. Now I just need to balance my oxygen. So I have 10 times 2, which is 20 oxygen, plus 24 oxygen, which is a total of 44 oxygen on the right-hand side. I need 44 oxygen over here as well. Let's keep in mind that I have 2 times 13, so there's already some oxygen in here. So if I take that and go 44 minus 26, that gives me 18. So this 18 here is going to go for there. Okay. So again, this 26 is right here. I need 18 for that other oxygen. So how can I get a number there? Nine. Okay. So that's one of the weird ones where we actually had to make sure that we double the water over here, even though we had an even number. So recognizing that I had an odd number of oxygen here, on this side, if I stopped right there, if I just said, okay, I have 13 plus 2, that's an odd number, which I only have an even number on the other side. And again, um, I know it's kind of a weird scenario. But once we get to this point here, now you have to ask yourself, can I reduce those coefficients down any further? Well, I cannot because 2 and 9, they're actually, they can't, they're not divisible by each other, so I can't reduce that. Okay. So that's that first one. Okay. Um, here's another one, good one. Um, here I have nickel metal reacts with copper one acetate. Now again, when it's in word form, you will have to translate it into your elements and compounds. So don't just leave it in word form and write it out in word form. So here we go, nickel metal. How do you represent nickel metal? Well, nickel metal is represented as Ni, period, Ni. What's the charge on that nickel as it stands all by itself, not with anything else? Very good, no charge. So nickel, all by itself, reacts with copper one acetate. Now again, copper one, that Roman numeral means that copper has a plus one charge. You should know what the charge on acetate is. It's one of your 10 polys, so a negative one charge. So copper, Cu, and acetate, C2H3O2, has a negative one charge. So plus one, minus one. Plus one, minus one. Okay. What type of reaction is this? Well, when I look here, do I have a single element reacting with a compound? Yes, I do. So this is a single replacement reaction. So this is a single replacement reaction. Now I need to find out, will this reaction take place? Probably the best way to find that out is to go to our table, which I don't have up right now. Let's get that up there real quick. Okay, so our single replacement table is right here. Okay, so I kind of wrote the equation through there. So I have nickel all by itself trying to replace copper. So where is nickel? Nickel is right here. Oh, good. So nickel is right here, the thing standing all by itself, nickel, and copper is way down here. So will this reaction take place? You better believe it will. So since this reaction will take place, whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah. Where are you? So what's going to happen is we're going to have, and again, when looking at that single replacement sheet, the nickel is trying to replace the copper. Since the nickel was listed higher than the copper, this will take place. So we'll have nickel with our acetate, and we'll come back to that in a second, and our copper is kicked out. Now, since nickel did not have a charge and it was not in a compound, nickel has more than one charge. Nickel can either be a plus two charge or a plus three charge. This is the only time you get to choose which charge it is, okay? Because 
Here, copper has a plus one charge. Nickel has no charge. So if you're going with copper with a plus two or plus three, it's your choice. In this case, I think I'm going to go with a plus two charge. Not that it's any easier, just as an even number. So that means I'm going to need two of the acetates. Okay, so that's how my compound looks balanced charge wise. So if I have two acetates, two C2H3O2s with a negative one charge, that means I need two over here. Okay, if I have two coppers, now that means I need to put a two here. And I have one nickel, one nickel. So my reaction is balanced. And again, I had the freedom, if I wanted to go with a plus three, now I put a three here, a three there, and a three there. Am I balancing the charges and then the number of atoms? Okay. All right, so we've done a combustion and a single replacement. The next example looks like a good little decomposition. How do I know it's a decomposition reaction? Because I have one compound, and that is all I have. So it means it's going to break down into its elements. So in this case here, I have manganese and chlorine. So I'm going to have manganese and Cl when it's all by itself. And again, you want to represent one of each to start off with. So chlorine ends in I and E. So that means I need to put a 2 here. I would not carry that 4 over because it's not a polyatomic. Since I know I have a 4 here and a 2 here, I need to put a 2 here to balance the number of atoms. My manganese looks good. So again, this is a decomposition reaction. So now we've done a combustion, a single replacement, and a decomposition reaction. And decomposition are really nice and easy to work out. Okay. All right, let's see what we have here. Ooh, potassium carbonate reacts with gold 3 nitrate. Okay, well, let's do that. So again, making sure that you know what each of these things actually represents. Potassium, that is, okay, carbonate, CO3, one of your 10 polys, reacts with, plus sign, gold 3 nitrate. Gold is AU, and has a plus 3 charge, so I'm going to go ahead and put that plus 3 right up there. Nitrate is NO3, what's the charge on nitrate? Very good. Negative one. So that means that I need three of those. I don't already have three. I need three. Because I want that to equal zero. All right. Coming back over here. Carbonate has a negative two charge. Potassium has a plus one charge. So that means I need, that's right, two potassiums. Don't go the other way and say I need two carbonates. Make sure you're balancing charges. Each of these needs to equal zero. All right. So now that I have my reactants set up correctly. I wonder if I can scoot that. So now that I have my reactants, I have my potassium carbonate and my gold nitrate, now what are my products going to be? Well, again, in a double replacement reaction, these two are going to switch. So in this case here, I'm going to have potassium with the nitrate. Okay, NO3, we'll come back to that. And also have the gold with the carbonate. So again, whatever the charge is here, you have to use it over here. So since it's a plus three, I gotta go with plus three. Carbonate is minus two. That doesn't look very balanced. That means we're gonna need three of those and two of those. Okay, so there is Au2 parentheses CO33. Potassium has a plus one, nitrate negative one. Awesome. Okay, so let's see here. Actually, let's zap that guy there. So once we have that written down, now we can check the product side to see if we have anything taking place. Nope, we don't want that. We want this guy. So we can look at our double replacement sheet. So potassium nitrate, let's start with the nitrate. Nitrate's right here. Let me blow that up just Okay. So nitrate, NO3, any positive ion, means it's soluble. So nitrate's not doing anything. So let's look at the carbonate, 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 where are you? Down here, carbonate, and it's in any of these three here, we stay in that same section. So we ask ourselves, is gold an alkali ion? In other words, is it a group 1A? It is not. It is actually a transition metal. So we go to any other positive ion. It says it's not soluble. 
not soluble means that we form a PPT. So in this case here, here's our precipitate. If we did not have that, then we don't have a reaction. So now we can go on and balance out the number of atoms on both sides. Okay. So if you have no PPT, then don't try to balance the number of atoms on both sides or even balance the charges. Check and see. Will you have a precipitate that forms? It'll save you some time. So in this case here, um, we have two gold and we have three carbonate. So let's start over here. We have three carbonate and we have one, so I'm going to put a three here. So now how many potassium do I have? I have three times two, which is a six. I'm going to put a six there. So now I have six nitrate. I have three over here. I'm going to put a two there. So now I have two nitrates and two gold. Two gold. I'm balanced and I'm done. Okay. So even though these look ugly, these are the easiest ones to work out. You have your table, which will tell you if it forms a precipitate or not. Okay. So make sure you can use that. Also, don't forget, there's too many clues on this thing. Like, what is an alkali ion? Some of you don't remember what an alkali ion. That's unfortunate because you need to know alkali, alkali earth, halogens, and noble gases, all that fun stuff. But this table is really a nice little cheat for you, unfortunately. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's see, so we've done that one. So we've got one more example, and let's do a single, I'm sorry, not a single, a synthesis reaction. Okay, and I think that goes right in order here. So here's a synthesis reaction where we have barium and nitrogen. Very good example here. So we'll start off with the barium, put the BA there, and nitrogen, put a nitrogen there. Now, notice, notice, did not carry that subscript. There's no polyatomics here. We can't carry any subscripts. Don't do it. All right. So let's write the charges down. Barium has a plus two charge. How do I know? Periodic table. Nitrogen has a minus three charge. Is that balanced? Not even close. So that means that I need three bariums. And I need two nitrogen. Oops. Now, the reason why that two is there is not because it's here. I did not transfer that over. I have a two here because of the charges. The charges told me to put a two here. The charges told me to put a three here. Now that we have this balanced out, charge-wise, equaling zero, now I need to balance out my atoms. My nitrogens look good. I have a three on the barium. So again, that's a really quick, simple review over the five different types of reactions. And again, you need to know this. Okay, You should be able to identify whether it's a single replacement, double replacement, a combustion, a synthesis, a decomposition. You've got to be able to do that. And you'll also have those tables available to you. So it's just a matter of knowing which is a double, for double replacements and which one's for single replacements.